charter schools, they don't get paid. They don't get. They don't receive as much funding as the district public schools. So they have, they receive less. So, and that and the decision on charter schools, as you know, is made at the district level. Speaking of budget, uh, what I've read is that there was a 1.3 billion dollar cut last year, and then, and then let me just finish. And then this year, okay, they were trying to reinstate a billion dollars. But the calculations uh, I've seen is we had a 585 dollars per student funding decrease last year, and now we brought it back to 150 uh, per student funding increase. But the math tells me that there's a big disconnect yeah, there. Here's the disconnect: the federal government provided funding that went away. So in the fiscal year ending last June, this last June, the federal government had funding that went to K through 12. They cut all that out. So you had, at that point, you had federal funding and state funding. The federal government cut all theirs out. We, we kept ours flat. Then this year, we, with no federal, additional federal money, we increased ours a billion dollars. It's your money. I mean, it's not like there's any free money. It's your money. So this, where that money came. Yeah, so, so the state, that my first fiscal year kept it flat. This year we increased five billion dollars. You know, billion sixty-eight. Billion. So the federal government cut theirs the year before. Well, I wanted to make a comment based on a couple of prior comments, Mr. Tag and over here, that um, in regards to preparing kids for life and college and getting parents involved, I feel very fortunate. I've been in Pinellas County over twenty-four years and came from Connecticut prior to that, and I am so thankful that that my school in Pinellas County has provided me with the most fabulous, awesome training over the years. I've worked in magnet schools, I've worked with educational initiatives about multi-age grouping, looping with children, these are ways to make stronger connections with parents and students. And unfortunately, as the emphasis on the test has become more and more demanding, that what we know are really strong educational initiatives have become so watered down that we feel like we're really just kind of puppets now. So I, that, that's a big frustration for me. And I feel so fortunate that I've had such fabulous training. But now it's almost frustrating because I can't use it anymore. I'm, feel, I'm told what story to be on what day of the week and what math page to be on one day of the week because I want every child you know, in the county to be on a, a similar pacing guide. So I think as professionals, when we know there are really good things that we can do for students, we need to be allowed to do that. Well, so we do some things at the state. You know, the federal government does some things, and the local districts do things. So, you know, the thing that I'm trying to figure out is what are we doing at the state that's making making your job? What can we do that make, makes your job better? Because I know you care about taking care, making sure kids are ready for either college or career. So, what can we do at the state? What are the programs that that we that the state has passed regulations, laws, things like that? They're having an adverse impact. Um, I think most people believe that uh, that we have to have some measurement system, but it can't be you're just testing all the time. Yesterday in Miami, they gave me a whole chart of how it was at the high school. Uh, first off, they explained that 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th uh, grade all had different requirements to graduate. So it's changing every year, which makes it more difficult. Second, they just talked about how you start with testing uh, right, right away and you just test, test, test. And so what should we do? How much should we do? What should that's what I'm trying to figure out. I think